hello students let us start with the next chapter of 11th standard that is cell cycle and cell division so we all know that growth and reproduction of all organisms depends on the division and enlargement of cells the mechanism of division and multiplication of the cells together form cell reproduction only if the cell divides the organism grows right so it is the life period of a cell during which a cell synthesizes dna that is it replicates dna grows and divides into two daughter cell this is what we call as cell cycle then we have cell growth which is the increase in the cytoplasmic volume so this is a continuous process whereas dna synthesis will occur only at a specific stage right Duration of the cell cycle will vary in each organism and each cell type. Duration of a typical eukaryotic cell cycle is generally 24 hours in the human cell, whereas in yeast it is about 30 minutes. So this cell cycle has two basic phases. They are interphase and the M phase. M phase is the mitotic phase. Let us see what is happening during this interphase. So interphase is generally the resting phase, right? It is a phase between two M phases. So we'll have two successive M phases and in between we'll have interphase. It includes cell growth and DNA synthesis and it will last for more than 95% of the duration of the cell cycle. So let us see what happens in this interphase. Interphase itself has three phases. These are G1, S phase and G2 phase. G1 is the first gap phase or anaphase. Then we have S phase which is synthetic phase and then we have G2 which is the second gap phase. Let us see what happens in G1. So here in G1, it is the first growth phase. So it is interval between mitosis and replication, right? So mitosis is when the cell actually divides and replication is when DNA synthesis occurs. So in between this interval is what we call as first gap. So here there is continuous growth of the cell. The cell becomes metabolically active. It prepares machinery for DNA replication because that is what it has to go and do next. It has to enter the synthesis phase. And it's in, it synthesizes RNA as well as protein. Then the next phase starts that is the S phase. Here the DNA replication takes place that is the DNA multiplies and its amount doubles. But we have to remember one thing that even though DNA is multiplying the chromosome number is not increased. In animal cells the replication begins in the nucleus and the centroid replicates in the cytoplasm. Right? Then we have the next phase which is the G2 phase. So this is the second growth phase. Here the cell growth continues to increase. There is synthesis of RNA and protein which continues here also and the cell actually prepares itself for mitosis. Next we will have mitosis. So mitosis is the actual cell division phase. So this is where the cell divides and we have two new cells forming from the single cell. In human cell cycle, it will last for about an hour and it will have two stages that is karyokinosis and cytokinesis. Karyokinesis is the nuclear division when the nucleus splits into two and cytokinesis is the division of cytoplasm where the cytoplasm splits into two. The M phase is not present in all the cells, right? Because some cells will not show this division like heart cells. Whereas many other cells divide only occasionally to, re to replace all the dead and damaged organ uh, dead cells which might, be, which might be present. The cells that do not go further will go into G1 phase and will enter an inactive state. Right? So this is called the crescent stage where nothing is happening. So such cells will remain metabolically, metabolically active but they will not proliferate. They will not divide. Now let us see what is mitosis. So mitosis is basically a cell division. It occurs in somatic cells. Somatic cells is all the cells of your body other than the sexual cells. 
it is an equational division why it is called an equation division because the number of chromosomes in the parent cell and in the progeny will remain the same it is equal right we start from 23 pairs and we end up with 23 pairs so that is why it is called an equational division mitosis is generally seen in diploid cells that is cells whose chromosomes are paired it also occurs in haploid cells of some lower plants and some social insects it involves major reorganization of the cell components right so the karyokinesis of mitosis has four stages these are prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase so in prophase is what happens between after the s phase and g2 phases of interphase it is the longest phase in mitosis in the S and G2 phases, the DNA molecules are intertwined. So, this is what we see in the early prophase. So, what happens is here, the chromosomal materials, that is the chromatin fibers, are untangled and they are condensed to form mitotic chromosomes. They are seen to be composed of two chromatids attached together into, at the centromere. The centrosomes begin to move towards the opposite poles of the cells. Each centrosome radiates out microtubules which are called esters. The two esters together with spindle fibers forms the mitotic apparatus. Right? Cells at the end of prophase do not show Golgi complexes, ER, endoplasmic reticulum, nucleolus or the nuclear envelope. Then let us see what happens in metaphase. So, the nuclear envelope completely disintegrates here, hence the chromosome spread through the cell. The chromosome condensation is completed. You can see here that they have become smaller. So, now because of this, they can be studied under the microscope and we will see two sister chromatids. The chromosomes come and lie at the equator at the end of this phase. Right? So, the plane of alignment of the chromosomes at the metaphase is called metaphase plate. The spindle fibers from both the poles are connected to the chromatids by their kinetochores in the centromere. Then we have anaphase. Anaphase is the shortest phase of mitosis. The centromere of each chromosome divides longitudinally and we have formation of two daughter chromatids. As the spindle fiber contract, the chromatids move from the equator to the pole. We can see here that they have moved to the pole. At the end of mitosis, they were present here, but now they are present at two ends. Then we have the next phase, which is telophase. So here, the chromosomes cluster at the opposite poles and uncoil into chromatin fibers. You can see these are the chromatin fibers. The nuclear envelope assembles around the two chromatin fibers, thus two daughter nuclei are formed. So, we will have two daughter nuclei out here, right? The nucleolus, Golgi complex and ER now reappear and the spindle fibers, they disappear because they have already done their job. So, next we will have the division of cytoplasm that is cytokinesis. Here the cytoplasm will split and we will have two daughter cells, right? It starts when telophase is already in progress. So here there is a cleavage furrow which is formed. It appears in the plasma membrane and then it generally deepens in the center dividing the cytoplasm into two. Now we have to understand one thing that this will be different in different cells, right? For example, in plant cells, it is completely different. In plant cells, the vesicles from the Golgi bodies accumulate at the equator. It grows outwards and meets the lateral walls. They fuse together and form something called as cell plate. It separates the two daughter cells and later the cell plate becomes the middle lamina. This is what happens in plant cells. So, during cytokinesis, organelles like mitochondria and plastids will get distributed between two daughter cells, right? In some organism, the karyokinesis is not followed by cytokinesis. So, we have multinucleate condition that, that is they have more than one nucleus, right? This is seen in endosperm in the coconut. 
whereas in animal cell we have cleavage furrow that is what appears in the plasma membrane and the cell divides into two so this is how it works now let us understand the significance of mitosis now we all know that mitosis produces diploid daughter cells with identical genome so whenever somatic cells have to divide this is very important because it retains the same number of chromosomes in all somatic cells it helps the body to grow and also repair itself mitosis in meristematic tissues helps in continuous growth of the plants throughout their life it restores the nucleocytoplasmic ratio that is disturbed due to cell growth it helps in cell repair and replacement like in cells of upper layer of epidermis lining of the gut as well as in blood cells in next video we will study about meiosis thank you